Frida uh, Kahlo, can you define for me, when you think of Frida Kahlo, what do you think? Eyebrows. Eyebrows. Eyebrows, yeah, great, yeah. This feels like a school lesson, doesn't it? Well done. Jimmy, over there. Anything else about Frida Kahlo? What is it about Frida Kahlo? Colour. Who said that? Yeah, colour, yeah, Frida Kahlo, colour. Well, I was in, um, I was in Nashville back in 2019. And I saw the Frida Kahlo exhibition was on at the Nashville State Gallery. Now I was feeling a bit flat. Um, I had a few things going on and I was feeling a bit flat. So I decided I'd get an Uber into the heart of Nashville and go to the State Library in Nashville and see the Frida Kahlo exhibition. Because you know, it's not something that comes to Australia all that often. I thought this is my chance to get to see some Frida Kahlo. I didn't know a lot about her, but I knew that she was uh, full of colour and I knew that that was one of the things that I was really looking for in that particular uh, time. So, so I went down and I got to the, the, the gallery and I walked in feeling excited that I'd found the place and it was a bit of an ordeal getting there and I walked in and I went to buy my ticket and I noticed there was a distinct lack of people in the building at the time, you know, and I went up to pay my ticket and the lady goes, honey, Free is going back to Mexico. She left yesterday. Oh. I went, no, I've come all this way from I said, I've come from Australia. You know, can't you get her back? She said, no, nah, she's gone, she's gone. So I missed my chance to see Frida, right? And I was really excited about going to see her. And so I started thinking about that and I thought, uh, you know, what was it about Frida that made, that is so, um, you know, so iconic, isn't it? You know, we see if, a painting of Frida on a t-shirt or a pair of shoes or a pair of underpants. You know, that's how far the icon of Frida, iconography of Frida has gone. Um, we've even made Frida Barbies. You know, you know you've really made it when you're, you're on a Barbie. Um, and I was just amazed at that whole, what was it that made that change from Frida, the person and the painter, to Frida, the, the icon, this, you know, voice of power and, and you know, whatever. And, um, the more I looked into Frida, I kind of began to discover that she was actually nothing like that. Um, in fact, she had her political views and she was a strong woman, but she was also very much the painter and very much about trying to paint what she was dealing with because she had an enormous pain in her life. I don't know whether you know her story. She was uh, uh, in a bus accident when she was about 19, 18, 19, and um, left her horrifically scarred for the rest of her life and very in very much pain for the rest of her life. She only lived to, uh, I think, her early 40s. So um, had a great effect on her life. So a lot of her paintings, when you look at them, are all about her struggle with pain. And I kind of watched, looked at those paintings and I began to see something deeper in Frida, not Frida the icon, but Frida the, the woman and Frida the, the painter and Frida the woman who was struggling with pain and grief and all these things, you know. And suddenly her paintings began to make sense. I kind of went, because I didn't know much about it before that. And there was one particular painting called Frida on the border, uh, Frida in a pink dress on the border between Mexico and the USA. And it's her standing in a, a pink colonial gown and she's got her hands like this crossed over. In this hand, she's got a cigarette and in this hand, she's got a little Mexican flag. Right? And on this side of the painting is industrialised America. You can see the smokestacks of the Henry Ford building. You can see the the cracks in the ground appearing and going through into Mexico. You can see just this vast industrial, you know, capitalistic kind of nation. And then on the other side, where the little Mexican flag is pointing to, you, you've got to look for these little signs, you know. Suddenly there's this picture of, of a hacienda and this, um, this Mexican scene, but the cracks are going through from America into the Mexican side. And some of the um, things on the ground, these, you know, like lights and stuff, power cables have gone into the ground and they're making their way through into the flowers on the Mexican side so they're beginning to take over and Frida didn't have a great relationship with America even though she lived there for a long time um, she hated the exploitation of her people she hated the exploitation of her work so at one point she said those Americans those amigos no saben nada which means they know nothing and I thought that's a great place to start with this song so I wrote this little song for Frida called No Saba No Da. <laughs> no 
Magdalena, free the car with your red dress on. I went down to see you, but you were long gone. I was looking for your color, cause I was feeling low. But you were south of the border at home in Mexico. My senorita, Magdalena, Los Amigos, Los Gringos, no sabe nada. Well, you and Los Gringo land, yeah. you had fallen out of love. Of all their business and money, you had had. Your pain was your compadre, like a thorn in your side, and it would hold you down, but you were looking for the wings to fly. My senorita, Magdalena, Los Amigos, Los Gringos, no sabe nada. You were looking to fly, my senorita, Magdalena, Los Amigos, Los Gringos, no sabe nada. So much pain in your eyes, Senorita Magdalena. Los amigos, los gringos, no sabe nada. And you were looking to fly, my Senorita Magdalena. Los amigos, los gringos, no sabe nada. And they would hold you down, my senorita, Magdalena, Los Amigos, Los Gringos, no sabe nada. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.